This video is for documentation and education purposes only. Do not attempt to recreate anything you see in this video. I am what some folks occasionally refer to as a professional. If you make a mistake working with electricity, you will not get superpowers. You'll most likely just get dead. Now, with that out of the way, roll the intro. So I scavenged this old high voltage microwave transformer and a few other parts I had laying around the shop and I thought to myself, self, why don't we build a Lichtenberg wood burner? My main concern when building this project is I wanted it to be aesthetically beautiful, I want it to be rugged and durable, I want it to be portable, and I guess at the end of the day I should try to be as safe as possible. So here's my little parts that I've scavenged. I got some uh, 20 penny nails I'll use to put this box together and uh, get this frame put together and I'll show you how this is going to work. I built that frame box there out of just some recycled lumber and of course none of it was smooth or level. I'm going to be putting a top on this box. So I ran this entire box through a planer, believe it or not, and that way it'll be nice and smooth when I put the lid on it. And this is how the setup's going to work here. I'm going to have a switch on one side so that I can control the power in and the high voltage transformer is going to be on the other side. So again, I'm just going to have them both separated like that. Just my design. The main components on a Lichtenberg burner are going to be the power in cord, which is going to be this cord here that I scrapped off of an old microwave. And the power out cable or wire is going to be this anchor GTO 15 high voltage wire. I got 25 feet here. There's a reason I got 25 feet and maybe I'll explain that to you later. I also picked up these heavy duty clamps. I didn't want to just cut some off of a uh, set of jumper cables. So I just went ahead and picked those up. I've got some high temperature, high voltage electrical solder there as well. I might use it. I might not. I don't know yet. But this is the basic setup. Let's keep rolling. The power in is going to be this side by the switch here. So I'm going to mount this switch box. And I will run my power cable. I'll just wire that straight to the switch. I'm going to run it in right through here. I'll drill a hole here in the side. Keep it simple. Run it straight in. Just wire it to the switch. To make this portable, I'm going to mount the high voltage transformer here to the bottom of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run bolts from the outside into the bottom of the box and have it anchored at four points. These are the bolts that I found lying around. I got some bolts, some nuts, some lock washers, and I'm going to use this Forstner bit here as a countersink on the underside of the, this uh, framing box that I got. Before I mount the transformer though, you'll notice that the transformer itself has this coating on it. So on one corner, I have to go ahead and scrape all that coating off. I just used a regular old metal file. That way I can use this as a grounding point for this device. I marked and pre-drilled all my mounting holes for the high voltage transformer. These bolts fit in here perfectly and they're countersunk so that when I put this on a tabletop, they won't scratch or anything like that. And I'll go ahead and get this flipped back over and get the transformer mounted. And all four bolts come through just like that. Back at the input power side, you can see that I've run my power cord into the box here. Just drilled that hole right in the side like I said I would. Put a loop in the cord so it doesn't pull back through and doesn't put any pressure on the connections here. And I'll be wiring it to this switch here. But before we go any further, I should probably explain something about this switch. The only thing I bought for this project were those cable clamps and that high voltage wire. This switch I had lying around the house. This is a three-way switch which I'm going to use in a single pole application. I'm not going to drop another seven bucks on this project. So just going to use what I have on hand. We'll wire it into place. This is how I went ahead and wired that. I am not an electrician by any stretch of the imagination. So if you try that, your mileage may vary. Come to the moment of truth just to see if my switch works. And you can see it does. So I now know that I'll be running power to my high voltage transformer 
but I'm going to flip this switch over so that it's off in that position and then on in the up position, just so it's a little bit nicer. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and take that uh, light bulb back out of there and finish up wiring the transformer. I salvaged this plastic uh, wire cover here from the transformer, you might have seen that earlier in the video, to run my black and white wires through. I just stripped some old coax. You can see that I now have the transformer mounted. It's firmly mounted on the bottom of the box here. At the end of my black and white coax wires there, I slipped a little bit of heat shrink and I put a couple little spade connectors there, which will fit perfectly on this side of the high voltage transformer. On the other side, I'll be doing the same thing on the output. It too has one of those little connectors. You can see here, it's all connected up. I hit it with some of that high temperature solder just to make sure the connection is nice and tight. And I'll slip that heat shrink tube over top of those just for a little extra cover. With those connectors in place and the heat shrink tube all tightened up, input power is done. Time to go to the output side. Now these two orange wires here do nothing in this project. So I just went ahead and capped those off and kind of tacked them to the side of the box here just to get them out of the way. Make sure that I don't have any, any problems with those. All I care about now is my output power from this point and my grounding point there in the bottom. Starting off with the power out cable and clamp. You can see how I went ahead and attached that and threw a little bit of solder on there just to make sure that my connection was good and tight. And I'll show you how this wires into the box. The red power out clamp wires directly through the box and into that output point there. Did the same thing that I did on the other side, just a spade connector covered with some heat shrink. And that's all it takes to do the output power. Time to do the ground. At the clamp end, the ground connectors wired the same way, but on the other end, I put a little ring so that I can slip it right over top of my bolt there. And when I bolt it in place, that'll give me a good solid ground to the high voltage transformer there, or at least to the metal case of the high voltage transformer. Pretty simple. And that's basically it. The machine itself is technically complete. But I'll give you a quick walkthrough here to show you how everything works. I've got my power in. It goes through the hole there, goes into the switch, from the switch to the inputs on the high voltage transformer, out of the high voltage transformer, one goes to the ground, and the other goes to the power out. Little orange cables out of the way, and that's it. But I guess you guys want proof of concept. Let's go outside. Right now I'm using 20 penny nails as my probes. I will be replacing those with some copper probes as soon as I dig through my copper bucket and find some. But for right now I'm just using the 20 penny nails and it's not going to create as good a connection. But we'll see what happens. All safety equipment on. Power on the device. Okay, well you can see that my connection on my ground is not that terribly great. But there we go. Starting to get a little bit of burning there across the wood. And that's essentially what I'm going for. I'm going to move these probes around, see if I can get a little bit better contact here. And uh, see if I can show you something else. Here's take two. And my flow is a little bit better this time. Again, the board has been covered, or I shouldn't say covered, but there's been a coat of water baking soda mixture painted on the top of the board to assist in the flow of electricity. At least I believe that's what it's for. The mixture ratio is one cup of water to one tablespoon of baking soda. I recoated the board and moved the probes a little closer together and we get a lot more dynamic result there. Now I'm just using some uh, scrap board that I had. This is just pine. Uh, and again, I'm just doing this as demonstration purposes only just to kind of make sure that this machine even works before I actually attempt to do anything really cool or make any really neat designs with it. But that's about it. I gotta say that I'm extremely happy 
that my little Lichtenberg machine even works in the first place let alone can do cool things like that I can see myself having a lot of fun with this project in the long run provided I don't electrocute myself in the process Alright, well, it's a little bit of a close-up of the board there. Looks pretty neat. All the power is off currently, so everything's safe. There's the machine. It works. But I'm not going to send you guys away like this. I'm going to go ahead and finish off the machine and show you what it's actually going to look like in its finished state. So, stay tuned for that. So this is what the final project looks like. Our completed Lichtenberg device. See, I went ahead and wrapped the cable there around this handle. On and off switch, clearly labeled. On the other end, I've got my clamps. You can see that I finally did dig through my copper box, or copper bucket in the basement rather. Found some copper probes I'll be able to use in the future. Those are going to work out much better than the, uh, those steel nails or metal nails, whatever those were that I was using in the demo. Clearly labeled, high voltage, though you never know whether anybody's going to believe you or not. But that's it. I put the handles on there. makes it really easy to transport. I can put this thing anywhere. All the research I've done tells me that I don't need to put a vent on this box, but I can still do that. I've got a pretty neat idea of how I would put a vent on this if I wanted to. And that's it. That is our final Lichtenberg device project. Now, simply by watching this video and watching my disclaimer at the beginning of this video, you've promised not to try to build this. That being said, I've put some helpful links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, well, you know I'd appreciate that thumbs up like. We're also on Instagram these days. Check us out there, give us a follow, see what we're up to throughout the week between videos. Until next time, maybe just maybe, I'll see you on the next video. If you enjoy videos about the randomness of our amazing world, consider clicking on the globe to subscribe, or maybe checking out one of the other videos right here.